Greetings, my fellow soldiers of the Omnisaya, and welcome to another Warhammer 40k lore video concerning the broader Adeptus Mechanicus. Since I already made an episode about the Skitari in general, and how one is created, I thought to present to you a few of the types of troops these Mechanicus soldiers can bring to bear. Today, especially, I will tell you about the Skitari vanguards and Skitari rangers, and in future episodes, I would like to tell you more about the Sicarians and the Ballistari. A small issue I would like to address before I get into the thick of it is that some of the details regarding just their war gear might not be 100% accurate, as they are from the 7th edition. I am your host, the Grim Dark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn more about these types of Skitari, shall we? The Skitari Vanguard, informally known as the Rad Troopers, serve as the vanguards of the Skitari cohorts of the Adeptus Mechanicus Forge Worlds. They are feared throughout the Imperium, for they use the baleful energies of the Forge Worlds as their weapon. Equipped with pack generators that bleed potent radioactive byproducts, these martyrs of the Omnisaya are so saturated with radiation that even to approach them is to succumb to their peculiar curse. Their baroque carbines fill the air around their foes with harmful radiation, corrupting the atmosphere itself even as they punch hyper-irradiated shot into the flesh of their victims. Should their foes survive the worst of the shooting, critical levels of rad poisoning may still be achieved by the very proximity of the Skitari vanguard, who will look on in silent interest as an enemy who thought that the worst was over stumbles, chokes, and dies. As you can deduce from this, they are far more effective against light enemy troops with little to no armor. It's gonna take a lot longer to kill heavily armored targets such as traitor space marines. The Skitari Vanguard bring the baleful touch of the tech priests to the far corners of the galaxy. They fight in the most inhospitable conditions possible, for over the many civil wars waged by the cult Mechanicus, they have learned not only to endure baleful energy, but weaponize it as well. Such a high volume of radiation bleeds outward from a Skitari Vanguard's war gear that even to stand near one is to become weakened and fatigued. For non Skitari to be stationed in the same barracks is a death sentence. The Vanguard themselves are theoretically safe inside their warplate, but on the rare occasions these warriors unscrew their helmets, the sight of their missing teeth and hairless, sore pocked skin tells a very different story. Though the Vanguard Troopers' signature radium carbines slowly kill their wielders, their effect upon those struck by their bullets is a hundred times worse. Should enough hyper-irradiated shot penetrate its target, the secondary effects of the Rad Volley become amplified to the point where not even a Tyranid could possibly survive. Because of this, the Skitari Vanguard are assigned to the most hazardous war zones of the galaxy. They bear this duty stoically and in solemn silence, fighting to the last in the name of their machine god. A vanguard unit is typically composed of 4 to 9 Skitari vanguard and 1 vanguard alpha, which serves a similar role to that of a sergeant in the Imperial Guard. As standard, all Skitari vanguard are armed with the Skitari warplate, these are plates designed to be worn for several years at a time. Secreted under a superdermal layer of ceramite alloy are recombinant cells that harness moisture from the wearer and recycle it. This liquid is transmuted into a gelatinous unguent that coats the inside of the suit, preventing the slow abrasion of the wearer's body while affording a measure of protection from the harmful emanations of their own weapons. The Radium Carbine Radium weapons are so volatile that they will eventually kill their wielder. Their baroque beauty belies a singularly vile function, not only to strike, but to render the battlefield as deadly as the rad waste of Mars. 
Each weapon's bullet cylinder is so thoroughly bathed in radium that a volley can cause a localized red storm. Those inside such a storm soon find their flesh blackening and slowing away. Up to two members in a five-man squad, or three members in a ten-man squad, can replace their radium carbines with Arc Rifle Arc weapons are powered by bulky permacapacitors shipped from Mars. Some of these zinc-plated blocks store energy from days when the Imperium was young. Arc weapons discharge energy with a loud crack firing blots of blue light electricity that can fry a man's brain or overload a war machine's data cortex in a second. The Plasma Caliber As volatile as it is deadly, a plasma caliber exchanges range for a truly terrifying rate of fire. A squad of Skitari armed with several plasma calibers can light up the night with each volley. To say their users risk life and limb in the process is a grave understatement, yet to their tech priest masters, such collateral damage doesn't matter at all. The Transuranic Archibus The precision and inhuman efficiency that typify the Skitari legions are epitomized by these long-barreled heavy weapons. Firing a shell of depleted transuranium a transuranic arquebus can puncture a tank from one side to the other, the resultant pressure wave also pulping any biological creatures that may be sheltering inside. One Skitari vanguard in a squad may take one of the following. An enhanced data tether. Seen as mouthpieces of the tech priests, who in turn are prophets of the machine god himself, those honored with carrying an enhanced data tether are obeyed without hesitation by their reverent Skitari comrades. An Omnispex An Omnispex carries a Raptor-class machine spirit that can read heat emissions, data signatures, and biological waveforms even at extreme range. Should it be kept focused for an extended period of time, it will determine the weak points of those it scrutinizes and pass them on to its master. The Skitari Rangers A Skitari Ranger of the Adeptus Mechanicus is a hunter of sentient creatures in the same way that tech priests are hunters of knowledge, the enemies of the Omnissaya in particular. Skitari Rangers are the unstoppable cyborgs of the Skitari legions that do not rest until the bloody deed is done for they are driven ever onwards by the imperative to locate their foes and ensure their destruction. They do not do this by drop pod strikes, launched from above, nor by sudden teleportation into the ranks of the enemy, but by stalking their quarry over the course of solar weeks or even months until it can run no longer. Once the designated target is in their crosshairs, The air fills with the thump and crackle of galvanic weaponry, even as the Skitari continue their restless advance. The stink of electrocuted corpses is never far behind them. To fight the foot soldiers of the cult Mechanicus is to kill or be killed, for the Skitari rangers never give up when hunting down their foes and their stamina is legendary. In the lean and hungry days of mankind's hominid ancestry, a hunter would kill far larger prey by tracking it to the point of exhaustion. It is by this principle that Skitari rangers hunt the reaches of the galaxy. Once the rangers have been dispatched, they will home in on their quarry at a slow but relentless pace. At first, their victims, ranging from pirate warbands to Zeno's war hosts, can slip the net of Skitari gunfire easily enough. If they flee far enough, solar months will pass, even standard years, long enough that the terror of the initial engagement is all but forgotten. All the while, Skitari rangers march in silent, unstoppable lockstep through trenches and ruins, their noose closing a little tighter with every passing night. Just when their quarry assumes itself safe, a constellation of blue lights will appear on the horizon. Almost imperceptibly, it grows closer and closer, and then the darkness lights up with the blazing of gunfire. 
the Skitari, for whom the original engagement never ended, close in again and again until the deed is done. A standard unit of these consists of four to nine Skitari Rangers and one Skitari Alpha. As standard, all Skitari Rangers are armed with the Skitari Warplate, the Galvanic Rifle, which is modeled after the hunting flintlocks of Mars's past. The Mark IV Archon Galvanic Rifle is a precision tool in the hands of a Skitari Ranger. Its bodywork is that of an antique, with a polished wooden stock and curlicues that echo the sandy seas of Mars's desert. Yet the Galvanic Servitor bullets inside are incredibly advanced. When such a bullet strikes home, it causes all the potential energy of the target to burn out in a killing blast of electric force. Up to two members in a five-man squad, or three members in a ten-man squad, can replace this galvanic rifle with an arc rifle, a plasma caliber, a transuranic arquebus. One Skitari Ranger in a squad may take an enhanced data tether or an Omnispex. Optional war gear that a Ranger Alpha or a Vanguard Alpha can include melee weapons in the form of a power sword, a taser goad or an arc maul, ranged weapons in the form of a pistol such as a phosphor blast pistol, a radium pistol or an arc pistol, relics of Mars which are esoteric artifacts bestowed only by senior tech priests for them to test in the field, and special issue war gear, which can consist of a conversion field, a refractor field, or digital weapons. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about Skitari Rangers and Vanguards. Which one of these would you rather have fighting for you? Let me know in the comments below. I would personally pick the Rangers, because they are skilled hunters, and I don't die from radiation poisoning if I stand next to them. As usual, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button, and maybe even subscribe for more content. If you'd like to help me or my channel, go check my Patreon page in the video description, where any contribution is very welcome. I thank you very much for watching, and wish you a great day. The Emperor Protects.